whether she's screaming, shouting, kicking, which happens, then we still put needle in because we've got to make sure that she has it. She needs it to keep alive. It's, it's very difficult putting the needle in. It's just, you know, we usually cry every time we do it. I can't produce my red blood cells. So every four weeks, I have to have a transfusion to replace my red blood cells. What it also means is that I have excess iron in my body and my body can't get rid of that iron on its own. So I have to have a drug to help my body release that iron. I can see why people find it difficult to do their, their pump or their infusers because how many times can you put a needle in um, and it's, it's a lump, it's rock solid in your tummy and it hurts. Why would you want to put a needle in that tummy? It's a needle. And if it was really like a uh, injection or something, just put it in and then, like diabetes, you know, just pluck it in and that. I wouldn't mind that every night, but like, oh, staying like the whole night. And it makes scars and bruises, but when I come in the morning, I'm like, oh, my tummy is hurting because of that thing. We didn't actually find out we were carriers until well after we had actually conceived our first child. Um, the time where we actually found out about the problem was when um, we had our baby. I had a lot of bone problems along with the thalassemia and there were spaces of time where I was away from school for about six months. I had operation. There are just two choices, you either live or you die. And I think I've seen people that kid themselves that think, well, but I'm different, I'll be okay. There's nobody that's different. If you don't do your treatment, you will die. The UK Thalassemia Society are a great charity. They're small, but they're big out there in supporting the, both places like the Children's Hospital and the families. They've organised um, days where they've come up from London to Birmingham to meet families and spread the information that they have. They've supported us in producing a leaflet for teachers about thalassemia. I must say Thalassemia Society is such a great tool. It's, it's really helped me in the past where I had no information about thalassemia at all. And if this leaflet comes after every two, three months, I was like reading the whole, each and every line of the book because I didn't want to miss anything. I've been working with the UKTS for quite a few years now. And I have to say that I'm continually uh, amazed by the amount that they do and by their, how effective they are for such a small group. I find this particularly impressive that uh, if it wasn't for the UKTS we actually wouldn't have one of the uh, iron chelating drugs that we now have. Now that uh, you know, there's improvements, there are tablets, we don't have to spend 12 hours a day injecting ourselves and you know, we can't go swimming because we've got the pump on. Now we have tablets and I think it was the UKTS that really pushed and really raised money for, for, for that which is you know, phenomenal. And me personally, it's made a huge difference to my life. I see how much thalassemia is changing. It's now very much an adult illness. Previously, you wouldn't expect to see thalassemics in their 50s. And now, you know, we've got grandparents. And I just think that the nature of the research that needs to be done is also changing. And we're restricted by how much money we've got. You know, we're restricted in how much we can do for the younger thalassemics. Mm -hmm.